the audio sucks, the video sucks. So if you decide to go ahead and watch it, that's on you, and I don't want to hear any bitching. Interestingly enough, this engine was overhauled in Australia in 08. So here's a rebuild tag, there's the date. And there beside rebuild it says yes, and then I think that says Mount Thorley, but I'm not sure. That West Track Cat was the one that did it. And, um, so I don't know how that works. I don't know if this engine originally went to Australia and then it was brought over here or exactly what happened there, but this did come from a coal mine in West Virginia. So anyway, um, I don't know where I'll start on this thing. It's a pretty big job. A lot of parts here. I'll probably either start by stripping all these pipes and coolers off, or I don't know, I might just start on top and go down. But anyway, here's a look at the thing before I start. For whatever reason, they decided that the engine wasn't worth fixing or I'm really not sure what the deal was or what their, what their thoughts were on the deal, but they obviously pulled it out of the truck and they ended up selling the engine at auction. So I don't know, we'll see what the deal is with it. Here's a look at it from the top. It's quad turboed. That piece of exhaust manifold was missing when I got it. I don't know, I guess they scavenged it and put it on another machine or something, but. Quite an engine. Son of a bitch. It's gonna be quite a fall too when I fall off the top of here. And this is not even a big engine. Those guys that work on the 3600s or uh, the EMD 710 and 645s, they know that this is just a baby, but. There were a lot of comments on my first 3508 video about oil capacity and stuff like that. And I guess everybody and their brother chimed in and had a different idea. That video kind of took off for whatever reason. But um, anyway, here is a chart that shows the oil capacities on the 3508, 3512, and 3516 with whichever pan is on the engine, the shallow, deep, or vehicular. So that should help clarify all those people that had all those different ideas about how much oil the engine held. Those 3508s had the shallow pan, so they held 60 gallons. This 3516 is a vehicular set up so it's going to hold 48 us gallons if it were an industrial it would either have the shallow or the deep pan and that would be the capacity either 110 or 220. i've made some progress here on this thing so i've got all these big ass oil coolers off of here oil pumps off all the stuff on the lower side of the engine is all gone now i've got all the wiring stripped off all the hoses and pipes, everything feeding the turbos and all that stuff on top is gone. That's one of the first things I like to do is get rid of all the, the little stuff, the pipes and hoses and wires and all that kind of crap that's always in the way. So both sides of the engine are cleaned up now. Got the front stripped off pretty well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is climb up on top and start on pulling the turbos and working my way down to the block deck. So I'll pull the turbos off and then I'll pull the exhaust manifolds off and the intake manifolds and then um, from there, it'll be time to start pulling the tops off the heads, pulling the guts out of them, and then I'll pull the cylinder heads and so on and so forth. So, 
Uh, I've got quite a ways to go, but I've got a pretty good little bit done. I'm probably about six hours into this, I'd say, right now. Yuck. Tuna. I don't need anything that smells like that. So anyway, um, I'm going to get up here and get these turbos off and uh, start working on the top side of this and I'll show you where I'm at here in a little while. I've got the outer piece of the intake manifold off now so I wanted to give you guys a look at these charge air coolers. These would be air to water coolers so coolant flows through the middle of them and then the charge air or the boost air goes through these fins and down into the block. And there's an open cavity in that block and then it comes back out of the block through these little intake elbows here and into the cylinder heads. So it's pretty amazing how much crap gets built up and caught in between the outer part of this intake manifold and everything along each side. I bet there was 20 or 30 pounds of mud and all kinds of other stuff in there. So the next thing that will happen is these coolers will come off and then the exhaust manifolds will come off. And then these coolant uh, manifolds or coolant pipes or tubes or whatever you wanna call them will come off. And then all, the, all of these little uh, intake elbows, all 16 of them. And then from there, it'll be time to start pulling the guts out of the heads and the heads will start coming off, which is where things will actually get interesting. I know I haven't really showed that much of this up to this point, but <clears throat> honestly, you really haven't missed anything. There's just been a whole bunch of cussing and raising hell and um, a bunch of parts coming off of here. Really nothing interesting at all, so. I've got everything off the center of the engine now. The smaller hole in each head is the exhaust port, the bigger hole is the intake port. That's the big center cavity where the charge air goes into first and then it feeds back out of there through these small holes through those elbows that I showed you and into each cylinder head. So the next thing that I'll do is start pulling all the guts out of the heads. I'll pull the, the valve covers off, uh, all the rocker arms and shafts out, injectors out, and then pull the rocker boxes off. And then from there, it'll be time to start pulling head bolts and pulling heads off. I don't know what went wrong with this engine, but whatever it was, it must have been with this cylinder here because they've had this head pulled off before. I know that because there's only two head bolts in it. So whatever happened, happened right there. And apparently they decided that uh, that was the end of the line for this engine with them anyway. So I don't know what happened. I'm guessing it probably just dropped a valve or something. The engine still rotates, like I said, and it doesn't seem to have any real major issues. So hopefully that's the case. We will find out when I get there, but. That's what it looks like right now. I've got all the cylinder heads pulled off now. All the side covers are off on both sides. Here's that cylinder where they had had the head off. And what had happened here is it just dropped a valve so it beat the piston up a little bit. Here's the head from that cylinder. And then this is what a good head should look like. As far as I can tell, that's all that was really wrong with this engine. So it just needed a piston and a liner here and a new cylinder head. And then it did also need cam shafts on both sides. Both cams are in pretty bad shape, but other than that, there really wasn't anything wrong that I've, at least that I found so far. 
I'm kind of surprised they didn't fix this engine and keep using it because it was not worn out by any means. You can see that there's quite a bit of cross hatch left here. So this engine was not in bad shape at all. This rust damage most likely happened after it got here to me, sitting out in the lot in the rain because they, um, they had scavenged a few, a few parts off the top end and didn't have the exhaust manifold bolted up tight to a couple of these heads here and that's how the water got in. So the next thing I'll do is uh, I need to get this stand out from under it and then I'll pull the oil pan off, front and rear housings, pull the cams out, rods and pistons and the crankshaft and the liners and I'll be done. So let me keep going here and I'll come back and show you where I'm at next. I was going to show you these injectors too. Here's 15 of the 16 injectors from this engine. They already had one of them out and I've already got it over in the other shop, but they're just like any 3406E or C15 injector. They're just bigger. I'd hate to have to buy 16 of those. Here was my scheme for getting this thing off the stand. Got the oil pan off and I'm getting ready to pull the front housing off and then I'll come back here and pull the flywheel and then the rear housing and when I get that done I'll be ready to pull the camshafts out of it and then from there it's pretty much just rods, pistons, liners and the crankshaft lift. So I should be able to get it finished up this afternoon or tonight I hope. I've got the front and rear housings off now. Here's the rear one hanging here. Camshafts are out. They run in these bores on each side of the engine, of course. And uh, what you've got is there's a drive gear that is kind of press fit to each cam and then retained with a bolt and a plate. And of course that drive gear drives off these idlers on each side here. And then on this side, there is a tone wheel that attaches to the back of the camshaft drive gear. And that is what the engine speed sensor reads off of. Luckily the camshaft split in half, so I was able to get them out by myself. At this point, there's really nothing left here except the block crank, rods, pistons, and liners. So let me try to get these, uh, well, I won't try. I will get these gears off the back of the engine. And then I will hopefully get it stood up on end. And I'll be ready to start trying to knock the uh, rods and pistons out of it. We'll see how that works out for me. Well, I've got it standing up on end. It was pretty sketchy even by my standards, but I'm still alive and I'm not bleeding, so that's all that matters. I've already got a couple rods and pistons knocked out. I wanted to start right here because this hole was rusted up the worst, worst of any of them. Uh, it came out pretty easy, so I don't have any 
any worries about any of the rest of them. They should all come out pretty nice. And um, I just called one of my buyers on this big stuff and he is interested in the block and the crank. So that works out good for me. I'll be able to leave the crankshaft bolted in the block. All I've got to do is finish pulling the rods and pistons out and then pull the liners out and I'm done. And then I'll just haul the crank, like I said, bolted in the block. And that's the easiest way to do that. Keeps the crank safe and I don't have to mess with pulling it out and all the main caps and all that. Here's one of the pistons that came out. This is a two-piece aluminum skirt, steel top piston like you'd find in any 3406E or pre-ACERT C15 truck engine. And then <coughs> here is um, the piston that came out of the hole directly opposite this one. So this is one of those Molly one-piece monotherm type pistons. And the reason that this engine had two different pistons in it is because in this hole and this hole they had changed the cylinder head at some point after the engine was rebuilt in other words they had an issue there and they had to do a power assembly change out so when they did that it got the new updated type piston in it at that time so i'm betting that since this head was changed also it didn't match all the other 14 that's probably going to be a one-piece piston as well. Rod bearings are standard. That's a good thing. And uh, if any of you guys are wondering why I compare a lot of stuff to a 3406E or C15 truck engine, and you don't really know what I do, that's because that's what I do for the most part is deal in 34060 and C15 truck engines. That's what I really know. All done, and boy am I glad. There's about 11 rods and pistons there. It had three of those one-piece steel pistons in it instead of just two like I thought. Sixteen liners. Those are a real treat to pull. Some more rods and pistons. And a big ass mess. Crank turns really good. All the rod journals look good. I'm sure the mains will too. So I'm pretty happy with it. I should do all right on the deal. It's just a lot of work. <clears throat>